want to say forget the compassionate, com forget assisting the person in their life just on the dollars and cents, it's a smart investment if you want to save money. From a purely conservative economic position, uh, we have to get down, bring down taxes in this state because struggling families can't pay taxes. Uh, a tremendous amount of money is wasted in this state keeping people in prison. So you heard the governor there in Rochester yesterday talking about the two parts of it, that uh, the compassion or the belief is the redemption uh, or your brother's keeper, that, that part of it. But then the basic math and what could be called the conservative argument or what he made for it, providing public college educations for prison inmates. Now, his comments uh, from the following numbers, the cost costs about 60,000 bucks to house a prison inmate. That's each prison inmate for a single year in a New York State prison, 60 grand. That doesn't count the legal costs when it comes to the trial, et cetera, or anything else for that matter. And that doesn't even count, obviously, the human costs of some of the crimes that are committed. Um, now, what do you get for the money from the so-called corrections system? In many cases, a revolving door. We got 40% here, four out of every 10 inmates. It's even higher in other states outside of New York. Maximum security inmates, minimum security, 40% of all inmates will eventually return back to prison where they'll cost, again, 60,000 bucks a year, every year. And again, more than 90 some odd percent of the inmates, even in maximum security places, they are getting out. So this isn't an issue of, well, do we throw money after people who will never see the light of day? The vast, vast majority, well over 90%, will. Now, take that math and compare those numbers to the numbers when it comes to educating inmates. The cost? About $5,000 a year per inmate. Now, you ask, what do you get for that money? Well, educated inmates, the numbers, this is from nonprofit, uh, nonpartisan groups, they stay clean when they go, three, when they go free. Just 4% of inmates who enroll who take classes here, just taking classes without even the graduation, actually return to prison. And less than 3% of inmates who do graduate ever go back. That means that we save about $60,000 a year if a person goes out and doesn't come back. And a degree goes a long way to at least changing those odds, not to mention the other savings from the crimes they don't commit after they're released. All right, for more here, I want to bring in the rest of tonight's panel. Sean Pika, you saw Sean in the film. He's executive director of Hudson Link, again, privately funded program that has helped hundreds of prison inmates in New York earn their own degrees in a program that RNN has both covered and has been a supporter of in the past. State Assemblyman Kieran Michael Laylor, he is a Republican. He represents the 105th Assembly District in Fishkill that is up in Putnam County. And joining us via satellite from Albany is Anthony Anucci. Anthony is the acting Commissioner of the New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision. And uh, Commissioner, if I, if I could start with you, first of all, thank you for joining us. Pleasure to be here. You know, when I was looking at your bio before we started, um, I think it's fair to say that nobody would accuse you of being a bleeding heart. In fact, I look at some of the things you've done, including uh, shock incarceration law, it saved taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. You're a law and order guy, um, so I ask you, answer the criticism that says this is throwing good money after bad. Why pay with tax dollars to educate inmates when a lot of people struggle right now to pay tuition on their own that are law-abiding citizens? I'm very sensitive to those discussions and issues, and I understand where the individual may be coming from. But the reality is that in 2013, we released nearly 27,000 individuals. These individuals are back in the communities. They're riding the subways. They're riding the buses. They're shopping in the supermarkets next to everyday citizens. And so what's critical is to try and make them succeed. The 40% number that is a recidivistic number is very difficult to justify. The expense is enormous, $60,000 a year. My budget for operations and capital is about $3.2 billion a year. If I can keep someone safe in the community, keep them from coming back, 
I'm not only saving the $60,000, I'm saving the costs of arresting that individual, of prosecuting that individual, I'm saving the court time, the probation department that has to write the pre-sentence report. And at the same time, if that individual becomes a law-abiding citizen and gains employment, they are contributing to the tax base. They are supporting uh, the state of New York. So dollars and cents wise, it makes a lot of sense. It also helps me run a safer system. I would much rather have an inmate worrying about studying for his final exam than studying how he's going to potentially uh, hide contraband or weapons or drugs past the security guard. The reality is people like Sean Pika exist in the system. These are individuals, if given the opportunity, can turn around their lives. Education is so critical. We recognize that by giving inmates basic education. We give them GED. The next level is a college education. We know that the only way to climb the ladder of success in this country is through education. Through the dawn of the ages, through time, all of humanity has progressed because of education, and we need to continue to do that in the system. College education is not for everybody, but clearly there are a number of individuals that will benefit, that can become law-abiding citizens, and shrink the costs to the taxpayer. Commissioner, let me do a couple math questions and I'll, I'll bring it to our table. One is, you've heard some of the criticisms from lawmakers who say, all right, I'll make you a deal. Governor and Commissioner, take 10% off the top in terms of the total cost right now that's associated with the correction system and make this in the form of a loan, not $5,000 in the form of a tuition payment. What's the problem with both of those proposals? Well, m you have to recognize that inmates make very little money. We make them work, we make them contribute to the support of running the institutions. They basically are paid a dollar a day for the services they provide. There are also a lot of other charges that they have to pay. They have to pay restitution, they have to pay mandatory surcharges, they have to save for their release money, which is $40. Their, their pay gets lagged. And we've also cut a lot of other benefits over the years from the last fiscal crisis. If you're in a medium security facility, you don't uh, get uh, weekday visits. So to saddle them with an additional debt when they're coming out of prison, I think does not make fiscal sense. The final game plan should be give them everything they need to succeed and saddling them with debt when they're coming out of prison and have a lot of other expenses to pay. They've got to find homes, they've, they've got to buy new clothing, they've got to do all the things that the average citizen doesn't have to worry about because they've been away from society for so many years. Uh, I'm going to bring the panel in, but I'm going to talk about this throughout. You think if people who are understandably cynical sat in on a graduation, their, their opinion would change? Oh, there's no question about it. I've, I've addressed the uh, recent graduation at Hudson Lincoln in Fishkill. I told the inmates, uh, first of all, don't take your education for granted. I told them the story of the young woman from Pakistan, uh, Malala Yousafzai, who was shot in the head by Taliban extremists for advocating for education for young girls. And in July of 2013, she addressed the world's leaders at the United Nations and said that the terrorists were afraid of education. They were afraid of books and pens. And with education, we can change the world. One book, one pen, one child, one teacher can change the world. I also told them, never underestimate the positive influence you can have on other inmates who could be inspired by you accomplishing something very difficult and certainly getting a college degree in a correctional institution is extremely positive. And I also reminded them that education is a lifelong process. This is an important milestone getting their degree. But education is a process that will continue every day for the rest of their lives until that point in time when they draw their last breath. 